So here's the question. Who is in charge of this massive change and threat? Who will make sure AI doesn't go sideways in the future? Who is going to protect us? Now it's recording. Now, now, fucker. Hey, well, Mustafa Soleiman founded DeepMind, the company that created an AI that beat the Go world champion. A life-changing moment in history. Check the Netflix documentary if you want to know more about it. Now, he's in charge of the AI department of the second most valuable company in the world, Microsoft just surpassed by NVIDIA some days ago. He's one of the brains that are transforming our present societies in a shockingly deep level. Shall we listen to what he has to say about what is coming in the future? This fellow wrote The Coming Wave, a sober, realistic warning letter from a man that has a deep understanding of the technology that will disrupt our society and change our lives forever. After reading it, I thought that it was important to share it in this channel. Why? Because in this channel, I want to give you the information and tools to be prepared for what the future can bring. So we can all have options and be the least surprised when shit hits the fan. I am a very anxious person. I always wanted to control my future. All I do is focus on this. Before reading this book, I fakely felt that I had some control over my destiny. Now, my perspective just changed. The future is going to be far more unpredictable than we have ever known it to be. Welcome back. Book in one sentence. Chaos is coming if we don't do something about it. That's right. That's the first thing I thought after reading the thing. The book shows us the disruptive potential of this new technology that will drastically change our society and lives and poses this question. Are we prepared for what is coming? From this book, I want to share with you the three main ideas that I think best describe the book, three frameworks, and three where and how to implement in life. A wave in this book, a metaphor for technology, is something unstoppable that will reach and affect everything we know. Through history, ideas, culture, and technologies have spread because of its general adoption, their power to change stuff, and give power to certain agents. Think about the rise and fall of empires, religion, burst of commerce, etc. Technology spreads, power shifts, foundations are undermined, the ability to stop it decreases, and thus it spreads even more. Stone and fire were proto-technologies of general use, meaning they spread massively and in turn gave rise to inventions and products. For example, cannons, that changed the balance of power. Three key ideas. Technology changes us on a deep level. Let's start with the definition of technology. Key aspects of the definition include, first, solving the problems and improving human life in areas such as communication, transportation, healthcare, and entertainment. And second, the development and use of tools, machine techniques, and systems, all designed to enhance human capabilities and efficiency. The idea that historical technologies like cooking food or the invention of the wheel have fundamentally shaped human biology and society parallels how AI and other technologies might redefine our future existence. Cooking food accelerated the release of its energy, which allowed the digestive tract to shrink and the brain to enlarge. We are not just the creators of our tools, but even on a biological and anatomical level, we are a product of them. There is no non-technological human being. What kind of technology are we talking about? There are two key technologies that define the coming wave. Artificial intelligence, AI, and synthetic biology. On what basis we choose these two technologies? The investments in research and development is growing non-stop in the last decades, and AI intensifies it even more. Follow the investments and the money, and you will see where the future goes. Okay, so what is AI? Machines performing human-like tasks, simulating human intelligence. And what is synthetic biology? What does synthetic mean? If sequencing is reading, synthesizing is writing. And writing not only implies reproducing known DNA strands, but also allows scientists to write new ones. That is, to design life itself. Welcome to the era of synthetic life. From the mid-20th century, technology began to operate at a higher level of abstraction. The core of this change was understanding that information is an essential property of the universe. Information could be encoded in binary format and in the form of DNA. It was the basis of life's functioning. Atoms were the basic components of innovation in the 20th century. Then the bits came into the picture, and then, increasingly, genes have supplanted them. Just as everything from the steam engine to the microprocessor was driven by an intense dialogue between physics and engineering, 
the coming decades will be marked by the convergence of biology and engineering. Atoms, bits and genes combined in an effervescent cycle of transversal, expansive, cross-catalytic capabilities. Our ability to manipulate atoms precisely has allowed us to invent silicon wafers, which have facilitated computing billions of operations per second, which in turn has enabled us to decipher the code of life. This tech is different for four main reasons. The various technologies I speak of share four key traits that explain why this time is different. They are general in nature and therefore of universal use. That is, they spread massively and, in turn, gave rise to inventions, products, etc. The stone and fire, language, agriculture or writing are some examples. They evolve super fast, they have an asymmetric impact and in some aspects are increasingly autonomous. We'll touch on these traits later. In terms of speed, keep in mind that children who grew up with horse and carriage travel and burned wood for warmth spent the last years of their lives traveling by plane and in houses with heating generated by the splitting of the atom. After the Industrial Revolution, changes started to be measured in decades instead of centuries or millennia. And the freaking light died on me again. Think about how data has been reproduced in the last 10 years. Just a few decades ago, data storage was a matter of books and dusty files. Now, humans produce hundreds of billions of emails, messages, images, and videos every day and store them in the cloud. So another big idea in the book is that as more technology is acquired and the cost drops, the emergence of new and cheap derivative technologies is made possible. Uh, general adoption comes inevitably. In the next decade, access to artificial intelligence will follow the same trend. Those same billion of people will soon have broadly equal access to the best lawyers, doctors, strategists, designers, coaches, executive assistants, negotiators, etc. As we can see nowadays, this historic pattern repeats itself. Now, something new related to AI comes probably every week, even every day. By the way, if you're interested in knowing some quick and fast um, recollection of information about AI, please check my description where you will find a link to my newsletter. Every week I put together news, videos, tools, things that I think that are important related to AI that happened this last week. If you want to be informed about what's going on in the future and AI, don't doubt about it and click the link that you will find in the description below. So is this AI thing a real thing or only the hottest topic of the moment? Or is it only another potential bubble? Mustafa Suleiman isn't only a techno bro or a computer geek that created two successful and important AI businesses, DeepMind and Inflection AI. He studied philosophy and theology. He was involved in counseling services and human rights policies for the mayor of London. He is a new renaissance man, like Elon Musk, in this new digital renaissance we're living in. And his sober, realistic, compelling look about the future can be beneficial for everybody. Three frameworks. With the new wave, so will the cost of doing, taking action, and projecting power go down. Knowledge is great, but the ability to act is much more impactful. Anyone with goals, everybody, will have tremendous help in achieving them. Agile creators working with efficient systems, curated data sets, and rapid iterations can quickly rival developers with more resources. Here are three frameworks I am putting into practice to be prepared to face the future. Plan your goals. Start thinking about what your goals are, how you would implement them, and have a detailed understanding of how to achieve them. All of this that I'm talking about right now is related to the birth of new agents. If you don't know yet what agents are, uh, you will hear it a lot this next few months or years. If you feel a little bit lost about all the stuff that I'm talking about, please click here in this beautiful corner to a video where I talk about agents. So start thinking about you know, what agents are, what are you going to be able to do in the future with them, etc. Think in terms of systems and data. One of the reasons that I'm doing this channel is to have my thoughts, ideas, and etc. in one place. In one place where, in the future, agents will be able to, like, look, learn about me, and use this data to assist me in my job and life. We'll see if the day comes. If the day comes, I'm going to tell you about it. Start being nice. My mind framework is that the least hateful and more cohesive as a society, the more chances to reduce the amount of undesirable massive catastrophes. Let's go back to the low entry access to this new technology. It means an increase in potential dangers, forming a labyrinth of unpredictable massive consequences. As more technology is acquired and the cost drops, the emergence of new and cheap derivative technologies is made possible. 
it will democratize access to power. As access to them rapidly increases, so do the potential harms, thus forming a labyrinth of consequences that no one can predict or anticipate. These amplifiers of fragility, system shocks, and emergencies 2.0 will greatly exacerbate existing challenges, shake the foundations of the state, and alter our already precarious social balance. We have been spoiled funding unimaginable, the fact that we could be facing wars, epidemics, catastrophes, etc. Although we had one four years ago, and we have a lot of like war right now. Anyway, coming back to the unpredictability I was talking about at the beginning of the video, it feels like we are going to enter an era like the Middle Ages, for example, you know, where every day could be the last. You know, you could be attacked by your neighbors, you could be attacked by North hordes, you could be burned because of fake accusations of witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like now. A higher probability of potential massive catastrophes, fake news. Yep, that starts sounding like nowadays. And this is the main dilemma of the future, exposed in the book. This technology leads humanity towards either catastrophic or dystopian outcomes. Create a community, spread hope, help people, stay kind. I think that facing this unpredictable moment, this is the best thing that we can focus on. Where and how to implement in life. Okay, after all this optimistic stuff that I just told you, what actions I am going to take in my life? Learn about technology to differentiate benefits from undesirable outputs. Start using AI tools and familiarize with a new way of thinking. If you want an example for that, click right here again, where you will find a video of Perplexity AI, a new AI tool that will help you redefine the way you search for information in the web. And find some kind of spirituality. Why? Because it is going to be a healthy way to face the main paradox or dilemma of this future situation. Another one. We can be super prepared, but at the end, it is out of our control. A paradox of the coming wave is that its technologies are largely beyond our capacity for understanding. There comes a point when technology can fully direct its own evolution, where it is subject to recursive improvement processes and goes beyond explanation where, consequently, it is impossible to predict how it will behave. It is the first time in human history that something we created can think and act by itself. There is going to be a moment where these systems are going to learn and teach by itself, creating an explosion of growth and intelligence that we cannot even start to comprehend. This is what is known as a singularity. Tell me in the comments if you want me to talk about it in the future. So after all this shit, the question that comes into mind is, who will make sure this technology doesn't go sideways? New forms of attack and vulnerability, industrialization of misinformation, lethal autonomous weapons, lab leak accidents, consequences of automation, an overwhelming set of stress factors and a colossal redistribution of power will converge to bring the only force capable of managing the wave, that is, the state, into a crisis situation. Who is protecting us? Our politicians? Nations? Big tech people? Ensuring safety and security are fundamental pillars of the nation-state system. Generally, governments know how to respond to public order issues or direct attacks from hostile countries. However, this is much murkier, morphous, and asymmetric, as it blurs the line of territorial and easy attribution. An infocalypse is looming, the moment when society can no longer manage a torrent of inaccurate material, and the information ecosystem that sustains knowledge, trust, and social cohesion, the glue that holds society together, collapses. Who controls the world is responsible for it. So, can we trust our governments and the nation-state construction to face the challenges of the upcoming future? Or are there other agents or players? To know more about that, check this video about how companies are going to become the new world nation states. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, and I see you in the next video. Stay kind.